Akasa, welcome to the state of learning session. I'm Kineko, leading various efforts around learning in Blink. And uh, I'm Kenji, I'm a product manager, I work on learning with Kineko and uh, many other folks. Um, so I'm going to provide some context first, and then after that, Kineko will provide about uh, a bit more details about the problems we see, what we've done about those, and our like, short-term plans for them. Um, all right, let's get started. So the goal of this presentation is not like to give you the truth because I don't think there is such a thing. Um, we, we have a way of like seeing learning, which is based on like things we believe in, uh, but nothing is like perfectly right. So the goal of this presentation is to give you some context and then after the fact, like you can talk to us, like help us like have a better understanding of learning. Like I, we want to hear about your, your thoughts, right? We're going to make this presentation, like the whole plan, um, essentially make things brighter. So hopefully you can help us make things uh, a bit better than what we have. Right? So first of all, what is loading? Um, I think it's important like to set a common understanding of what we mean by loading. Um, so is it like page load time? Is it like a specific point in time of like, the page load? Is it on load event, something else? So let's see. Um, so this is basically like um, a typical user story of like going to a website. Um, you can see that there are a bunch of activities like startup, loading, responding to an event, or animating something. Um, for the purpose of the web platform you've worked, uh, we define loading by all the loading activities that you see here, which is, first of all, when you navigate somewhere, obviously there is a page load, but that's not just it. Uh, when you start using the, the, the website or the page, like more data or more code could be loaded, and it's also part of loading, because it does have a huge impact on the user experience. So if you load like more code and like suddenly everything grind to a halt, it's a pretty bad user experience, and that's something we care also about. All right, so now that we have like a shared understanding of like what loading is, hopefully everyone in this room agrees that loading is important, because as you saw it, um, it's a huge part of like the, the, the user experience, right? So what do we want to do about it? We obviously want to make loading great, right. but what does it mean, right? So ultimately we care about like making user happy. Um, and when you think about how you can make user happy on the web, it's basically they are trying to achieve something, right? So the user happiness is highest when they are able to achieve something very efficiently. Um, there are a lot of research, and the one we've been using so far is uh, the fact that there is something about, um, oh yeah, in order for like you to achieve something, you need to, to reach the consistently interactive uh, time. Sadly, like, this is a bit uh, hidden, but time to consistently interactive is the metrics we want to drive down. Because even if like the page is showing you something, if it's not something you can interact with, what is the point, right? You want to be able to do something with the website. Um, okay. So, like, the basic research we use shows that people expect, like, transition, like a page load, to be done within one second. That's the ideal state, right? Um, by that time, if the user is trying to interact with something and it doesn't respond, the user happiness will just go down. Um, the other number that we have is, like, after 10 seconds, most of the user like would be super sad or like gone. So you want to get things done before you reach that point. Um, in the previous like loading talks, we talked about like first pain, first meaningful pain. So is are those metrics not important anymore? Um, that's not the case. Um, those metrics are actually the fact that getting to time to consistently interactive under one second is very hard. So we use like first pain and first meaningful first meaningful paint as a way to boost user happiness. Um, so if you, if you have like first paint happening at two seconds, it does provide like some indication to user that the page is definitely coming and therefore it might be worth like waiting a, a few more seconds, right? Uh, the same thing happened with the time with like the first meaningful paint, the point at which you have something you can start working with, right? There is some content, some content on the page. Um, Obviously, this doesn't go on and on forever, right? You can only go so far uh, with that kind of like happiness boosters. Um, 
All right. This might be very complicated, uh, so hopefully this like gets to the point. The idea with loading is that we should make we should find a way to make loading disappear. It should not be a user concern anymore. It should not be something that user has to suffer through. Uh, as you can see, this is very hard to do, <laughs> and that's why we're here. All right, so we want to make loading disappear. So what do we do? Do we just like load, uh, like land a bunch of optimization or like cheap API left and right to make loading disappear from all the page load? Obviously, the answer is no, we don't have like um, infinite resource and we also have like all the progress beyond loading. So we need to pick our battles, right? We can't just like fix loading all over the place. Um, so I would posit that the, the things we should be focusing on are very simple. The first one is progressive web apps. And the reason for that is those are websites that people have like spent some time like uh, investing into the user experience. And by default, because they use like service worker and like fancy new APIs, they do start with like a, a better user experience. So it makes our job much easier, right? If we were trying to fix the long tail, there is so much we can do. Sometimes like the long tail, like there is no web author behind it anymore. So we need to do interventions and so on. It's very hard. Um, the other thing we should be paying attention to is the next billion users and for different reasons. Um, for them, the, the network that they, they, they have is very slow or flaky. And so loading is like a very important matter to them. It's not like a matter of like a couple of seconds difference. It's like sometimes the page will take like 20 seconds to load. So we should do better on that. All right, if we go back to the progressive web apps, like is a naturally like better user experience. It is true to the, to, to the extent that the web developers can write a progressive web app that doesn't fail um, that does that just like start and stay on like um, a path of greatness, right? If you do something, you use an API and you don't know about like some caveats and suddenly the performance just goes um, like very bad, um, this is not good, right? I think on the, one of the most like um, difficult problem that we have on the web is like nailing performance. It's very hard to understand what's going on, what kind of like primitive you should use, should not use, what are the caveats and so on. So I think we should do better on that. We should find like all the things that are annoying about what we have shipped, like what are the bugs that people uh, have to deal with. Um, and sometimes also we actually are missing like some key primitives that um, make it very impossible to, to craft a good user experience. Um, all right, so that's basically my, my spiel. And from there on, I will pass it on to Kimiko. So let me talk a little bit more concrete things we are doing on the web platform. So to give you a bit more idea about what vision we are having, what the problems we are having today in our vision is. So we have a bit bigger theme this year. We call it scalable loading. And our problem vision is that the loading today is not scalable or sustainable which might sound a little bit cryptic, but uh, basically, we really, really want to provide the right for loading experience to users. And uh, for developers to build rich, modularized, progressive web applications, of course. But however, there seem to be big gap. There seem to be miscommunications between maybe developers and the web platform, or web platform and the browser, or maybe within browser. So something's not happening. We can't probably keep doing the same thing to, if we want to move web forward. So, okay, this is a bit of an abstract. So what are the problems? There could be many problems, but we categorize these into these three. And the, these are the problems we are trying to focus this year, or like we've been focusing this year. So the categories of made it's developer pain, user pain, and our pain. For developer pain, it seems clear that the, we are still lacking some of the necessary primitives that are expressive enough so that the developers can specify when to load, what to cache, like how to stream, like when to show something. We don't seem to have enough insights, or like uh, to, we don't seem to provide enough insights or control to developers. So we probably should provide them. And also, I've mentioned that we wanna, 
we wanna we want web developers to build modularized rich web applications, but we don't have great support for doing that. So we should fix that. We should upgrade the product, or we should upgrade the web platform. And then user pain, this probably sounds more familiar to many of you. So we are naturally doing not obvious <laughs> to lots of critical things to show the fast meaningful pain. So we could probably optimize more. And then on the other hand, for non-critical things, probably learning should really, really vanish. Yes. So that the non-learning, critical learning things shouldn't put any junk or shouldn't disturb the responsiveness on the main set. And then it, that's our thing. So it's about our implementation work, code base. It's inefficient, <laughs> actually. It's a little bit insecure and inflexible. It's limiting our productivity to scale well, or we should fix that. Otherwise, any of these problems won't be solved. So we are focusing on fixing these. So let me go through each <laughs> of these a little bit more detail. So fixing developer, fixing developer pain. So actually, I already mentioned some of these achievements in the keynote, so I'll try to be light on this. But we are naturally shipping and implementing many primitives. So we are adding more streams features. We are making preload work for brief and fetch. And the fetch now works with the key product option, CSS font displays available. And the net info API has now extension, which gives you more, uh, more detailed network quality information. Yes, and uh, with the new streams API, you can compose multiple streams so that uh, you can make directory stream the data from the input to the output like DOM node with some interesting processing with less latency, less big memory, less junk. The stream will take care of that. So you should probably start trying using that today. And what's coming next? Apparently we want to work on many things, but the, our resource is not infinite. So the, we want to work on what's really needed, what's really important. And our next target, one of our next targets is state priority. We think this is a very important problem. And we really, really want to hear your voices and feedback. So your thoughts are, please come to talk to me about these people. These people are the guys who are working on this one. And uh, there are several writing talks about more details for some of the yeah, primitives I've talked. Okay, then E6 modules, this is also mentioned in the keynote, but uh, we are finally shipping E6 modules. We were actually a bit behind other browsers on this one, but we're finally catching up. Uh, the loading side of this effort is led by Kohei. Hey, you, you should. <laughs> And uh, I've also sorry. <laughs> and I've also implemented module support for workload. So the new workload features like pink workload will come with module support, of course. <laughs> sorry. And uh, what's coming next? So to be very honest, we think that the current E6 modules implementation and spec is probably not really very useful. It's useful, usable, but uh, maybe not too fast or not very performant yet, so that we are working on optimized graph fetching algorithm. And uh, we are adding periods. And we are, of course, working on dynamic import, which should come soon. I think Kohei is right. <laughs> okay. And so S6 modules work is actually being done by many people. So congratulations to all these. And please find and talk to these people if you're interested in this one. Okay. And then we are, of course, also working on fixing a user pain. And uh, there are many things we want to optimize, but naturally we can't work on everything. So that, uh, currently we are strategically laser focusing on PWA and the service of And uh, so let me talk a little bit about service worker optimizations. Adding service worker to your website should make your website strictly better by default. <laughs> but it doesn't come at, without cost. So that, sorry, it comes with some cost. So that's some startup cost. And the average fetch that goes through service worker 
at slight more cost. So the, we are trying to, we're trying very hard to optimize out this. And the web shipped navigation payload and also speculative startup from Omnibox, these are the two which should hide startup cost for Sabisaka. And also we're shipping off main thread fetch. This is about all resource you're loading used to go through the main thread, regardless of whether the fit issued from the main uh, from non-main thread, like from Sabisaka or from Waka. And we are fixing that, and now all resource loading should never be delayed by main thread contention, which is actually huge. And we are also working on some other optimizations, like script streaming, which also kills startup costs. And we are working on re-architecturing so that the service worker request can go directly to the service worker within the same process without more IPC. Okay, this here's the people we're working on, including me, on this work. And we're also working closely with our awesome external contributors. Then, so let me talk a little bit more about like how we are trying to make loading not disturb the main thread. So uh, this sounds a bit interesting. You know Chrome extension and the, you know content scripts. So if you have many extensions installed on your Chrome and uh, those extensions have content script, all those content scripts used to run in single task, which at significant junk on the main thread. So that the, we chunked it to run it in multiple tasks. And the, this, oops, oh, I didn't know. This. <laughs> anyway, so this actually reduced 30% of main thread junk. It's awesome. This work done by Sakamoto san. Not sure if he's here, but anyway, please find, talk to him. Okay, and another a little bit interesting experiment we're doing is that in a, a in the local measurement, we found that throttling non-critical loading seemed to potentially improve user experience uh, because it will reduce the peak memory usage, which means that the less OM and less UX junk. And uh, it could also potentially make the time to fast meaningful paint faster on foreground tabs. So that we are experimenting this and that we are getting more data. So our share the results when we get more. And uh, this is a team for working on this effort. Then, fixing our pain, we are re-architecturing our loading code massively. So I can probably talk about this forever, but the, the, that will be probably a bit boring. <laughs> so that, let me try to put it short. So basically, our loading pipeline was designed initially when Chrome was born, which means that the, it dates back like 10, nine or 10 years ago. It was of course good and simple code initially, but we had it up many and uh, it has become chaos. <laughs> so we're trying to fix that. And uh, as a part of this huge re-architecturing, we just shipped module loading. Uh, uh, this one's also mentioned in the keynote, but uh, we are repressing all resource loading with the new IPC. And uh, as a bit of bonus, we shipped this with 9% TTFCP improvement. Sorry, TTFCP means time to fast conduct for paint. And uh, we are working much various re-architecturing so that uh, we are migrating our loading architecture onto PowerPoint one, and uh, all loading features will use module loading. And also we are doing subscription onion sip. These two topics have a, a dedicated talks so that you should just come to the talks. And uh, so let me talk a little bit about like uh, one of the re-architecturing we are doing. So we're trying to move our web security logic out of render process. So which includes the course CSP and the mixed content. And uh, you might wonder why, why we are doing this. Because this logic is not needed not only from render process, but also from various features which might uh, leave outside render process, like browser process, or maybe in some other service process. So that we are moving this, and we are unifying this logic into the single code base, so that the, we can use the same very secure, good implementation of our security logic from everywhere. That's what we're working on. 
And uh, this works being done by several folks again. Please find and talk to us. And uh, we are also like welcoming external contributions on this effort because we're we'll making many mechanical changes as well. So talk to us. <laughs> okay. There is yeah. Yeah. there is a bonus slide. So ultimately, loading is like very uh, large. It's like not just like the blink loading things. Um, like it does have a lot of things in the HTTP layer. Um, this slide says HTTP two, but there is one tiny bit which is not HTTP two. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, just I want to highlight the fact that um, the the team working the the network uh, stack has been working on push constellation. So if you use H two to push things and the browser actually has those things in the cache. Um, now I think it's in beta. Um, those push like um, streams will be canceled probably. Um, there are a bunch of like other like minor fix uh, for correctness, uh, but I want to focus more on the, the the considering category or reconsidering because this is where we want to hear from you. Like we want to hear about like what kind of use case you have. Uh, some of them are like um, pretty unsure if we want to do it or not. Um, the first one is it is about like when you have an H2 connection and when you want uh, to get a web font, for instance, you end up having to open a new connection. And maybe um, like for various reasons, security, privacy, but if you look closely at it, maybe it doesn't really make sense to do so. Uh, so we are looking into that. It's unclear if we can do it or not, but um, given the fact that this is quite expensive, uh, I think it's worth like trying to discuss about it. Um, the second one, cache digest, this one, it's unclear to us if we really need this feature because you could do something very similar to that through cookies or maybe even like with using Service Worker. Uh, if you use the navigation preload header, you can say, by the way, this is what I have on the cache. So don't push any of that. Uh, so cache digest is just making this a bit easier because the, the browser would do it for you. It would just send some information back to the server so look at it and say, OK, in that case, I'm not going to push A, B, and C because you already have them. Uh, so we want to hear about like what's the impact of like us doing that or not. Um, and the last one, style-wide we it. I, I know that uh, we, we've tried before. Uh, it didn't work out. We still hear a lot of like people uh, wanted this particular feature. It's not an H2 feature. It's just um, an HTTP header. So basically what it does is it's a cache control attribute. So you could say this particular resource is valid up to one day. After that, you can still use it, but up to a point. And this is where the stale way we validate fits in. You can say this is good for one day plus seven day, provided that you validate with me asynchronously. So it's in a sense, it's a it's a way to avoid blocking a critical resource or like revalidation request. You can say it's fine to use it what you have, just like check with me after the fact. Um, so we've tried before, it was kind of hard, hard to do because of the way the code is set up. Um, the hope is that with please navigate and sophistication out of the way, we might have like a better chance at it. Uh, but again, we want to hear from you, what kind of use case you have and so on. Uh, and with that, and from there, um, just taking a step back, what are the big problems we want to solve? I think uh, Kinwoko mentioned a couple of those. Um, so I, what I would like to see happening in 2018, this is all tentative, but I would like to have a well-lit and approachable loading path. So fetch priority is just part of the story. Um, <coughs> the other thing I've been wondering about is um, ultimately loading is very hard. So is there anything we could do to help developers like by taking care of the hard things with loading? Um, if you think about like serving a well-optimized image, it's like a whole like science. Right, it's very hard to to do it right. Uh, I've heard that some people like like using AMP uh, just for the fact that they can do that particular like image optimization thing. Uh, and maybe there is more. Like if you think about JavaScript resource, like you you have to care about like code splitting, tree shaking, bundling. Uh, it sounds very scary to me. Uh, so maybe there is an, uh, like an easy way to to like democratize more of those like hard things. Uh, second one, it's about loading additional code data. Uh, as Kiko said, um, like doing that should not change the user experience. We should find a way to make that happen. Um, third one, efficient loading. Uh, I think it would be sad if we end up with having like a huge bundle, and whenever you want to update a tiny thing in that, inside that bundle, we have like to ship it again and like parse it again. 
it's very bad for performance and also for data usage. Um, so is there a way for us to maintain like the lean, like you know, efficient modular small resource that we are used to? Um, and the final one is, um, it's kind of sad that you sometimes you have to build a single page app if, if you want like a great user experience, if you want to control transitions and whatnot. Um, it's sad because it makes you work harder. You have to re-implement a lot of stuff that are actually free if you just choose like a multi-page app. Um, so yeah, finding ways to make that easier. And with that, thanks for listening. I don't know if we have time for uh, questions. Sure. <laughs> One question over there. Sorry, I was just projecting. Um, so for the long tail of content where we don't expect site authors to update those sites at all because there's been like a one-time deploy. Uh, what are we thinking about doing um, to address those concerns? Are we thinking about interventions for loading? Anything else that we as a UA can do? That's, that's a very good question. I think in the past we, we've tried very hard like to do interventions. We did like the document.write intervention. Uh, we also did like the, the web font intervention, which is uh, if you're on a slow connection, and we know that web phone is going to fail, why not like just show the phone back instead of waiting for three seconds and then show the phone back? Um, maybe there is more we could do there. Um, I'm wondering if maybe if, if we had like a better understanding, understanding of what the page is trying to do, what the user wants out of it, if we could like have like better ways to optimize that content, given the fact that there is no one behind the wheel that we can reach out to and like work with them to make it better. So, Maybe the point could be made that if there is no one behind it, then maybe we can have like uh, more freedom into in terms of what we do with it. Uh, I don't know. It's it's for the, potentially very controversial, but if you look at the NBU market, um, if like there is a long tail of website that no one is updating, and it takes like more than twenty seconds to get it to show anything, it's pretty bad, right? So um, maybe we should be a bit more aggressive with that. Oh, can you go if you want to add something? Um, so, not so much of a question, but uh, you mentioned ES6 modules a lot, and um, so there is a question. Um, <laughs> uh, there is a significant compression issue there. And there's a proposal regarding shared dictionaries on H2 that will at least partially ad address that. Thoughts on that proposal? So I'm, I'm not sure if it's the same proposal I have in mind. I do have my maybe slight bias, but I've been working with the compression team uh, that we have here in, at Google for a long time. Like we, we did uh, Web2 web fonts, and then after that we did Broadly. And so that team is looking into doing a shared dictionary based on Broadly. Um, they are pretty far along. Uh, maybe, Brad, you have like the, some, some update to share? Uh, no. no. <laughs> 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 OK. Yeah, I mean, just one thing is, uh, in general, with a lot of the problems people bring up with ES modules, uh, the problems are actually just about any resource at all. You know, the fact that we have lots of JavaScript resources is, is not unique. We also have a lot of images and a lot of CSS and so on. So that's why I'm pretty interested in this kind of solution, you know, shared broadly or, or similar, um, because it just applies across all these problems. I agree it's not module specific, but it is, uh, like, there, the problem is more pronounced in scripts than other types of resources because they can be easily concatenated and gzipped, where if you send them off as smaller resources, you have a lot of overhead. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll be happy to hear more about this broadly shared dictionary and how it can be applied.
Just so that, like, we're just in progress of, like, figuring this piece out, so we love your help on this. Um, um, our current, like, proposal is not special case JavaScript, as I mentioned. Like, just treat it as any other small resources that we have found them. And JS modules uh, have this uh, syntax issue where um, you can't really just concatenate them. Like, you go, uh, so a single module. Scope is per file, and it's if you concatenate them, like it will have different me uh, semantic meaning. So yeah. By the way, I think we're going to have some brainstorm sessions about like pitch quality loading intervention and the several other stuff. So that the please come and it's tough, Mark. All right, thank you. Thank you very much.